Hey everybody, welcome to City Line. Tracy Moore is off today, so I'm hanging out. I'm happy to be here for many, many reasons. Number one, I love being here at City Line. I love to talk about food. And I get to talk to my good friend Randy, who in the beginning, I'm the one that dragged you on to City Line. It's true. Yeah. You're to blame. I'm the blame. Yes. I'm the blame. And we're talking about a real favorite topic for, for everybody out there that loves meat. We're talking about the good old roast. And what the kind king of roast? roast the what? prime rib. And what makes it the king? It's the big, meaty. You've got the fat on the outside, you got the middle strip in the middle, but then you got those ribs that everyone wants to fight over. Do you fight over them? Oh, I need the rib bone, yeah, for you sure. Need the I, I need the bone, for sure. Always, okay. the, the meat closest to the bone is always the sweetest. Yeah, and my father would be the one always, give me your bones, give me your bones exactly. at the end of the meal, for sure. So break it down. You know, there's so, many different theories when you come to cook a, a roast. How do you do it? Where this do you start? Is, this is just it. Cooking in the Christmas season is always with a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? The easiest way to do it is to do a roast. You throw a roast in the oven, you walk away, and you're done, right. right? There's not a lot of slaving over it and things like that. But you only get one shot. Right. And if you blow it, you're a chump. If you blow it, you just add more gravy. You're done. Well, you need a lot of gravy. Then. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but if you hit it right on the nose, and all of a sudden, you're, you're the, the king right. of the rib. So today, we're going to do a technique that I believe is kind of foolproof. And everyone likes their thermometers and things like this and have different things of touching it. And I understand at the restaurant we do those kind of things, but we're cooking all day, every day. Right. When you're at home, you haven't cooked a roast in maybe a month or two. So today, we're going to do a foolproof way. Okay. I'm going to start with a crust. Okay. Or you're going to start. You got a lot of garlic. You said you're not so good with a knife, but you're pretty good at smashing stuff. I'm great with smashing. So we got a lot of garlic. Then you got to put sea salt. Sea salt kind of works as like sandpaper against it. A little bit of pepper. I've got my prime rib roast here. And here's where we're going to get crazy and we're going to do some math. So okay. we're looking at... You doing math sounds crazy. I got a calculator too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kid yourself. But what we're looking at is roughly um, four pound prime rib. Right. Now for every pound of prime rib you use, you need to times it by five minutes worth of cooking time. So that's 20 minutes. Good. See, we didn't need the calculator. I'm okay. All right. I can do five times four. It's pretty easy. Preheat. But even if it was eight pounds, it would be... Eight pounds, five times eight, 40. 40 minutes. You tested me 10 now. pounds, 50, 50 minutes. minutes. We're getting it. Right okay, there. everyone got it now? Wow. Brilliant. Preheat your oven to 500 degrees. Yep. Okay. Then. And that is hot. You know, you got, a, you got a little bit of woes from the audience No, there. no. It's all about searing the meat because you're not searing it on open fire or anything like that. Adding a little some olive oil. oil just yep. to make it stick to the outside. We're getting off pretty easy today, Frankie. I'm not going to make you do too much work. Okay. I'll throw some time in there, but we need it uh -huh. nice and smooth. And there's nothing like time. Just we only got six minutes for the segment. Okay, we don't have that much time. Speaking then. of time. Okay, <laughs> so when you're doing your roast, the most important thing about making this thing happen and making it happen properly is it has to be at room temperature. Okay. Pull this out, leave it out of your fridge for six hours. Room temperature. Next thing, you want it fairly dry because we want this to stick. Okay. Do you want to massage it in or you want me to massage it in? You massage. I don't mind getting a little dirty. I got to do a decor out. segment after this. <laughs> I think some of the oil on the walls wouldn't look so good. So we're going to push this in. And you'll see a lot of clips where they're like stabbing the, the roast with knives and stuffing the garlic in. Yeah. I really don't think that's necessary. I like to massage my meat. I don't want to stab it. You know? I'm going to leave that right there. OK. <laughs> you got to treat it with a bit of love, right? Yeah. So a little bit of this. And then add a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper on the outside. Trust me. The beef is going to kind of sweat in the oven. It's going to do its thing. The salt's going to kind of fall off. There we go. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. It's looking pretty good. And you just like to use the dry pepper? Yeah, the dry pepper is going to work just fine on this one. Okay. It's all about the garlic, right? Yep. So we've got our room temperature roast. We've got it boned down so you don't need a rack, all right? Mm -hmm. We fire this sucker in for 20 minutes at 500 degrees. And then the magic of this is you shut your oven off after the time is up. Right. And you walk away. Go play some ping pong, play some Wii. Do whatever you want to do for two whole hours. Mm -hmm. All right? So why so, are you doing that? Essentially, every, every recipe out there says high heat, then low heat. But right. how high and how low? So we're going to the maximum heat. So we're searing it, and we're kind of hitting it really hard, throwing it in to, to its cooking environment. And then afterwards, we're letting it rest. And so as the heat comes down because the oven's off, it's just a controlled environment. And it's going to cool down at that time. So when we pull it out, we don't have to let it rest, where you normally pull a, rest, a roast out for 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. And so all the molecules that were hot at one point in time, and all the blood circulating like this, so it gets too hot, the blood explodes, it goes well done. This way, it just kind of brings it up and then brings it back down. Normally, with my roast, sometimes I'll put some potatoes, carrots in around it, and cook it right alongside. Can you yes. do the same thing? Our second segment today, we are going to do separately. Separately, OK. Because 
you want the roast all by himself. It's his, it's his own little planet in there. It's his own little and planet. And you don't want to open it up. You don't want to check on him. You don't want to do anything. Trust me, five minutes per pound. This worked out last night. I made it for my wife for dinner. And then it and happened. still married. Oh, no. And then she, she really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> we did all right. So, trust me, gentlemen. Cook every good, good, good roast. Everything will be good. So, we ready to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Let's take a look. So, it's going to come out. It's still going to be around, you know, probably 180 degrees, somewhere around there. And as you can see, you got all the juices in the bottom. Nice little dark kind of crush on the outside, the au jus. The garlic is still there. Now this is where we come into play. We're either going to be kings or clowns. Any uh, proper slicing techniques with the roast? Dude? There's, there's a whole bunch. You know what? You can take the bones off first. So just take your knife, run along the backside of the rib right. and through. Oh, I don't want to expose it just yet. Don't see that. <laughs> and then, it are we ready good, this? I can tell you. Watch this. Oh, look at that. That's actually perfect. And five you, minutes per pound. Yeah, five minutes per pound. Let it hold for two hours. Two hours. It allows the meat to rest. You're not really seeing a lot of blood leaving. No, the blood is already come out. It's in the bottom of the pan. But it, as you can see, it's like it's it's crisp on the outside, and then it's the same color all the way through. And this was done at 4:30 this morning, so it's already rested for six hours. So it would have been a little bit pinker. You tweeted me. What's your Twitter handle? Oscars at ba Oscars Barry. Yeah, he tweeted me at a three at four in the morning. Just and to said, see if you're up. Yeah, just to say, hey Frank, am I? and I was. <laughs> yeah, I was. I get up at three in the morning. So just to break it down once again, it's it's just five minutes per pound. Yes. Let it rest for two hours. Yes. Always go with the prime rib. That's what you usually like to yeah. be fail proof. And there you have it. Perfect prime rib.